Hi, I'm Garina Cholakian, Senior Editor of TravelAndEscape.ca, bringing you a special teeny web exclusive. We're here in northern Italy, about an hour southeast of Milan, in the hometown of Canada's celebrated chef, Massimo Capra. In this teeny web exclusive, available only on travelandescape.ca, you're going to be seeing a side of Massimo Capra you've never seen before, as he takes us through the very village, childhood memories and experiences that laid the foundation of who he is today. So this is where you grew up. Yeah, yeah this, is, uh, this is my hometown, home central, right here. Right you here. Know, this is the piazza. Tell me about the piazza. What happened here at the piazza? Well, piazzas are very important because, you know, you don't need to make dates or appointments with people, you know what I mean? You come here, there is a ton of people around. You, you hook up with the one that you want to be with. If you don't like anybody, you just wait 10 minutes, somebody else will arrive, and then you just move on. And you go, you know, I mean, this is, uh, this is where everything happens. I miss this part of life in, uh, in, in Canada, actually. I miss that. This was a hub of activities. Food everywhere. In the Sunday morning, you smell rosemary, sage, you smell the roast, you smell activity, life, you know. I mean, now it's, uh, it's pretty quiet. No. So this is, this is where the town met, was right here on this oh, piazza, yeah. here in Sesto. This is where the town met. We played so much frisbee over here. We played so much soccer. We played... Uh, with, Smoked some funny weed over there, you know, just amazing. <laughs> right there, yeah. in those steps. Right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right Excellent. there. It's Excellent. just amazing. Amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, one of the oldest uh, establishments in this city and one of the historical uh, pastry shops that are regional interest because they are, they've been open for over 100 years. My grandfather used to bring milk and eggs and, uh, and product over here, okay, from the village, okay, in the wintertime with the sled and the horses, horse-drawn carriage. So it's, it's amazing. This, the history in this, uh, in this place is incredible. Now, this yeah. particular location opened up in 1925. 1925, but the family has been in business 20 years prior to that, yeah. somewhere else around this road. When this corner came available, they moved in uh, in this location. And I hear that it's uh, about six generations in the family. Six generations in the family, that's wow. right. Well, let's uh, meet the owner, It's sorry? incredible. Uh, yeah, the owners are right there. Okay. Like, come. Arrivo, eh? <laughs> <laughs> These are the owners. Hello. This is the owner. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, uh, nice to no? this, what is the best pastry to have here in, uh, at Dondeo? What is the best pastry that we have here at Dondeo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this okay. is a very, this is a very professional answer. They're all good, but then, exactly. When I was going to school or when I was coming to Cremona, the bus station is just over there. So we used to just get on the bus. So my mother used to take me here to have a canoncino or a bignet. Mm -hmm. Those, were, this is what we call bignet. Yes. The other one is chantilly, which oh, is a bignet yes. with uh, chantilly sauce. Yeah, chantilly cream. Yes. So it's yes. cream and whipped cream mixed together. Oh, well, we, we have to try. Yeah, we, we have, have to, to try, try all of that. Here. Yes, of course. Okay, so one. Let's go to get our cappuccino. <laughs> This is uh, Massimo's childhood favorite, favorite These dessert. Are light. Um, cheers. Cheers to you. Yeah. Mmm. That's really good. Here's the butter. That is absolutely delicious. And the cream. Canocino. Lightly pasteurized. It's unbelievable. They make it in the back over there. So you only had one of these when you were, you were a kid? So this is where you grew up? Yeah, this is my street. This is, uh, this is my area. This is where I grew up. As a matter of fact, in the backyard over there, we used to come over and uh, listen to the nuns and uh, various entertainers, you know, do slideshows, talk about the Bible, talk about stories of the war. Wow. Always the good stuff, though. Right, right yeah, next door. Yeah, yeah, right there. And, and this is my house. You moved yeah. here when you were five years old? Yeah, five years old until I was 15, I lived here. Amazing, Full I can't time. believe we're going into Massimo Capra's <laughs> yeah, childhood it. home. <laughs> come on <Wow>. in. <laughs> Just push the door okay. and uh, 
That's there we it. go. This is your childhood home. <laughs> this is it. This wow. is it. Welcome in. Thank Where's you. Where's my mother? Mom? This is my mother right here. Oh. Ciao, mamma. Oh. Allora. Sta di sta so qui, eh? Ara di. Sta sedita, eh? Sta sedita. Sta lì, sta lì, sta lì. Mamma, che sta qui le carine. Carine. Eh, hai capito? Ara è comportata. Are you proud of who he's become today? Sei set, uh, sei contenta da che che so diventa me? Vedi che che cosa vuoi fare? So, suspicion and uh, eh? suspicion is very important, right? So you have to suspect that somebody is doing something wrong before they do it. Mm. So that's how you you get your kids to really be in line. In line. You know. So she says, well, you know, you're good now, but you know, you have to thank me for it. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, whatever. All the beating that I gave you, that's what that's made you why. good. It's like, well, I don't know if that works that way. I mean, it's... <laughs> I used to, when I was like eight years old, uh, the lady next door just got married, right? So her husband was a, a bricklayer mm -hmm. or a construction guy. Uh, so I used to go there because she was busy making sweaters and uh, piecework for Benetton and various mm. other uh, makers, right? So she was busy all day and the guy used to come home at six o'clock, he was hungry. So I used to go next door to cook for the man. Oh. You know, when I was like eight, nine years old. And everybody would be there like, oh, <laughs> watching, you know? Oh, <laughs> Grafioni. Look at that. Mayan. Guarda che è pieno di liquore, eh? ma non è una piccinina. Ah, mamma mia. Mm -hmm. ah. mm. 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 No, non basta, non basta. <laughs> You see, these fields over here is where I spent my time when I was a youngster, right? I mean, and uh, the crops uh, rotate all the time. So when there is grass in the springtime and the beautiful grass, you know, comes out early in the morning, there is snails everywhere. You know, in the fall, there is mushrooms. In the summertime, when there is this full of water, these ditches, you can fish. You can have little baby fish, you know I mean? You can fry it and eat it, you know, and make it in uh, vinegar, pickle it, whatever, right? And it's amazing, right? So we eat uh, whatever is available to us. We used to forage for everything, like little grasses and uh, nettles over here. You pick the nettles and then you make a beautiful risotto or stuffing for our ravioli, you know? And it's amazing because everything is here. It's all for us, right. you know? So we grab it all, right? you know? And uh, here, like in, in Italy, it seems like, you know, living locally and uh, eating from food that's literally right oh, around yeah. you was a way of life. Everyone forages for everything. And you know. how do you feel now in Canada? You know, there's an actual label, organic, <laughs> locally raised. <laughs> how do you feel about that? I mean, well, it kind of makes me laugh a little bit because we lost our ways, right? I mean, we've been uh, sold this bill of goods about food that uh, is not really correct. We should be able to forage as much as possible and get things uh, from the land, you know? I mean, we mm -hmm. should support our small farmers. Yeah. You know, our farmers are the ones that feed people. You know, not factories, you right. know what I mean? So factories are necessary because you gotta make food in some way, but you know, at, at the end of the day, this kind of living is, is what really powers us. I mean, this is what we are made of, land, people. You know, mm -hmm. we eat what the land gives us. Yeah. We've always done that. Yeah. It, always. And you really have brought that way of thinking to the food that you make today. I do, I do. I mean, and that's, that's always what I've done, yeah. I'm getting hungry, let's go make really lunch. Really delicious. Make risotto, what do you say? <laughs>